Okay, so as, as we have seen the properties and the meaning of the steady state distribution, the next thing to look at is how to compute it. Well, we have done a few examples for stationary distribution um, and it's, it's, computing the steady state distribution is not that different. And essentially based on our discussions, we have established three different procedures to obtain um, the steady state distribution. Well, when I say different, um, it's different in the sense that um, you might apply different numerical methods to uh, obtain it. However, algebraically speaking, all three actually corresponds to the same uh, thing, same computation. One, you can do, uh, you can compute p to the power m for increasing m, and after a while, um, if your Markov chain is ergodic, uh, all rows should converge to the same vector, and that will give you the steady state distribution. Okay, so numerically speaking, um, the number you have to use for M depends on the level of accuracy you need. Maybe you can look for convergence. Maybe you can look at the change in the distribution um, after after uh, certain cases. If if it is below a certain threshold, maybe uh, that that could suffice. That's one way to compute steady state distribution numerically. Another way is, of course, compute the eigenvector of P, the left eigenvector, remember, corresponding to the eigenvalue 1, and then normalize. Normalize in the sense that uh, make the, the vector so that the sum uh, is 1. Number 3, of course, solve this equ uh, equation. Pi times P equals P uh, pi, where uh, the sum of the components of pi adds up to P. To one. Now, uh, this uh, well, based on this, we have methods uh, to solve this, and one uh, observation is based on this. You can write for any j, you can write pi j times the sum of p j i s equals pi j. Why? Because this is equal to one. Because this is uh, the sum of any row of the state transition matrix. So this is just a trick to write pi j. But pi j also equals this over all i's, pi i times p sub i to j. So this is, well, the probability that you are in state i. Multiply that by the transition probability from i to j and add these products over all i values that gives you the probability being in J. Okay, so these two sides are equal. And then partition this to pi, uh, PJJ and PJI is where J and I are different. Okay, and this one also um, partition this sum into the components where I and J are different and also the one where they are equal, in which case you have pi j times p j j. Now in, in the left hand side, you have the same product here, pi j p j j, pi j p j j, which cancels out. And what is left is pi j times the sum of p sub j i's, where i and j are different, right, over all i values. And here, the sum of over all i values, which are different than j, pi i times p sub i j's. Now you see you have here pi j, p j i's, and here p i j's. We have to be careful here. Now these we call global balance equations. Okay, this is the general um, form, and um, well, of course, this is a little bit um, maybe tricky to keep in mind, but if you understand what this signifies, it'll be easier. Take state j, okay, state j here. Of course, there are a bunch of transitions into state J from other states, and there is a bunch of transitions out of J to other states, and also there is this um, self-transition uh, with, with a maybe a non-zero probability, you stay in state J. So what the global balance equations tell us is that if you take the probability of being in state J, 
and multiply that with the outgoing probabilities. P sub J i's. These are the blue arrows. This is P sub um, J one. This is P sub J whatever here. This is P sub J i. This is P sub J i plus one, let's say. I don't know. However many states you have, okay? So this is sort of the flux probability flux going outside state J, okay? And that equals the flux, the probability flux E. So those are the red ones, okay? So this is P sub one J. This one probably P sub I J, okay? If you multiply the probability of being in this state times the transition probability into J plus uh, all states being probability of being in those states times transition probability into state j, probability of being in state i times transition probability into state j, etc. If you add them up, and those two fluxes should be equal to each other. The, these we call the global balance equations. In fact, you can generalize this to not only a single state j, but a set of states, let's say, S0, okay? Here on the left-hand side, you have the probability flux uh, out of subset S0, okay? For all states in S0, pi j times the flux, um, the transition probabilities from state j to outside S0, not also the ones in uh, S0, but also the two ones outside S0. And on the right-hand side, I have the probability flux coming into set of states S0. The, uh, the probability of each state that is outside S0 multiplied by uh, any transition probabilities from I into some J where J is in S0, okay? So for instance, if you remember the example, um, Previously, we had one and two here. We had, uh, I think it was one half and one half. And here it was two over three, one over three, if I remember correctly. And we, we solved this by solving pi times P equals pi. Of course, you can do that. But instead of that, for instance, you can write pi one times the probability going from one out which is one half equals the ones coming into one pi two times two over three. Okay, I can also write the same for state two, but it will be the same equation anyway, so I'm not going to write it. Okay, so um, factoring the fact that pi one and pi two should add up to one, I can just write here one minus pi one, so I can obtain pi one over two equals uh, two over three minus two pi one over three. And if you put that on the left hand side, you have one over two plus two over three pi one equals two over three. And this is um, seven divided by six pi one. Therefore, from this, you can write pi one equals six over seven times two over three, which gives you four over seven as we have computed earlier, which means pi two will be three over seven. 